<laughs> Hello. Uh, <laughs> so I, last time I began a talk by making a list of, of techniques that are used in order to prove things. And certainly, after Johann's talk, I would want to add uh, the, this entropy method. It's a completely different method. And maybe in the question session, we can rewrite the list, and Yuval can add, you know, or we can all add, well, what about this technique? Anyway, uh, there are a lot of different techniques that are used. And of course, one of the questions is, what's the relations between them, et cetera? Um, what I decided to do today is to talk about two of the techniques on my list of eight. Uh, last time I talked about the method of miracles, and now I'll talk about the first one and the, the last one. And so the, 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 the technique I'm going to talk about is explicit diagonalization. And um, so more often than you would think, natural Markov chains, you can write down an awful lot about them. And uh, the, I, the example I'm going to uh, treat um, will let me remind you of what the, the Gibbs sampler or the heat bath algorithm is. Uh, we, in statistics, we call it the Gibbs sampler. Um, sampler. And it's also called Glauber dynamics or the heat bath algorithm. And you, you have a, a, a probability density, x1 up to xn, and you want to sample from it. And you do it by changing one coordinate at a time. Uh, uh, you want, but the problem is to sample from this, uh, this some distribution. I will specialize and give examples in a second. Um, but uh, we start someplace, x0, which is you know, x naught 1 up to x naught n, just any, any starting guess. Uh, and then we change the first coordinate uh, to x1, 1, and the rest stay the same uh, to up to x naught n. And then we change to, we change the second coordinate, keeping the others being fixed, x1, 1, x2, 1, then x3 naught up to x n naught. And we keep going, changing one coordinate at a time. At the end, we end up with x1, um, 1 up to x1 uh, n. We've changed each coordinate, and this is called x1. And so going from x naught to x1, that's one step in the Gibbs, uh, in the Gibbs sampler. And these changes are made from the conditional distribution of the ith coordinate given all the rest. And that reduces things to a one-dimensional problem, and we assume we can sample from, from those. And under mild regularity conditions, this is, this is a Markov chain, which is very, very widely used. And uh, uh, it, can, it, 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 it generates from this stationary distribution. So um, when I teach Markov chain theory in our graduate courses, um, I, the students have to do projects, which are half the grade, and I give out a, a collection of papers or problems, and at the beginning the students choose a problem, and then halfway through the course they say what problem they're going to choose, and then at the end of the course they hand in a paper. And so one of the, the last time I taught Markov chain theory, I said, um, uh, I gave a reference, uh, which is, w w there's a paper by the two Georges, George Casella. And Ed George, <laughs> two famous Georges in statistics, uh, and uh, it's called Understanding the Gibbs Sampler. And uh, my project, my proposed project was pick any example in this expository paper and prove anything about it, okay? because statisticians usually don't prove the kinds of theorems that we're trying to prove. And, okay? and, uh, and so three of the students separately decided to take the first example in the paper. And let me tell you what that was. So 
Um, uh, here, here is the example we'll be talking about. Uh, the state space uh, x, my user state space is um, 0 up to n, uh, discrete uh, crossed uh, 0, 1, the continuous space. Okay, so there are two components, not n, just n is 2 here. And the joint probability distribution, f of j and theta, okay, uh, is uh, n choose j, theta to the j, 1 minus theta to the n minus j. Now look at this with me, okay. This is a bivariate probability distribution. That is, if you sum this in j, you get 1, yes. If you integrate that from 0 to 1, you still have 1. So this is a bivariate probability distribution on this state space, right? That is, you, s you know, here it's, uh, this is the density with respect to Lebesgue measure on the second coordinate, and you know, it's a bivariate probability distribution. Is that okay? Did I confuse you? No. No. Good. Okay. Um, and so what does the Gibbs sampler become for this distribution? Well, I start out with some j and theta, so from j and theta, just some whatever, wherever I happen to be. Um, uh, I'm going to change j, uh, go, well, let's do it this way, go to j prime, but theta stays fixed, um, by flipping a theta coin uh, with binomial um, theta. If you fix theta, this is just the binomial distribution in j, so flip a theta coin n times and change j to j prime, and then, and then go to uh, j prime theta prime, you update the second coordinate from the conditional distribution given that the first coordinate is j prime from, and that is a beta distribution uh, with parameter uh, uh, j prime plus one n minus j prime plus one dot. Let me remind the non-statisticians here that the beta a, b, theta, it's a probability density on the unit interval, uh, and it, it has density gamma of um, a plus b over gamma of a, gamma of b, theta the a minus one, one minus theta to the b minus one. This is a and b have to be bigger than zero, and this is, you know, Euler's beta integral, and this is one of the standard distributions. We know how to sample from it. So that, you know, that would get you there, and then you fix theta prime, and you change j, et cetera. Uh, so that, this Markov chain is the, the Gibbs sampler. And um, now there's a sort of standard set of off-the-shelf techniques. It's an interesting fact that our community tends not to use these techniques, but there is a community. There's a standard way of approaching problems like this, which I called Harris recurrence uh, or Lyapunov type techniques. So they used the best available um, Harris recurrence. Techniques. Uh, and um, uh, that if, if you wanted to ever look, uh, uh, these are exposited in the book by mine and Tweedy. Uh, or, or my student Jeff Rosenthal has very nice accounts of them. And um, so they're the standard first approach to analyzing a typical Markov chain. And now this is their final project in a graduate course, and uh, they worked for six weeks pretty hard, and then they started teaming up with each other. And uh, the question I really asked them was when n is 100, um, and start from, say, 0, a half, start someplace, you know, in this space, uh, how large L um, so that the distance uh, of KL uh, starting at zero and a half um, minus this stationary distribution, F, um, is less than one over 100. 
No, it's just that, that's the question. Actually, tell me an L. Don't tell me big O, blah, blah. Tell me some L, okay? And so six weeks later, and they really work pretty hard, and they're smart kids, uh, students, putting constants in. Uh, uh, if L is of the order, uh, uh, or is bigger than or equal to uh, 10 to the 33rd, uh, it's okay. Okay. Well, if you run this chain, <laughs> You just try it, you know, you can run this chain, it's trivial to run it. The answer's around 200, okay? You know, you just run it, you see, when does it settle down? You know, I'm not, you know, you just watch it, and that's not a theorem, it's just what, what, what you would actually do. The, the right answer's around 200, uh, seems to be uh, the truth, about 200. So, uh, okay, A for the students, of course. Uh, um, but I said, ha, the professor will do this problem. You know? um, and I want to tell you uh, uh, what about, about this, because it's, uh, it's a reasonable example. Now I have to learn about these boards. That's a Okay, so, um, uh, and everything I'm this, now, I don't know about, without the jokes, but the story <laughs> is all recorded, and if you want to read about it, uh, uh, it's a paper I wrote with one of the students, Shidish uh, Kare and Laurent Solifkost, and it's, uh, it's called uh, Gibb Sampling. Exponential families and orthogonal polynomials um, uh, and it's in statistical science. And one thing about statistics journals um, is that uh, we don't just publish papers, or sometimes we publish papers with discussion. And this discussion are with boxing gloves, but not so thick. Uh, and so people, you know, so there are a lot of the savants in the area commented on this and tried to do better, and I'll tell you how that went as time goes by. Um, so this is a two-component Gibbs sampler, and there's a first um, idea, which let me explain that, so idea zero, I'll call it, uh, which is uh, if you just look at the J chain, that's a Markov chain. Uh, uh, the, I'll put it, the J chain is a Markov chain, so let me explain that. It's a reversible Markov chain is reversible. So let me do it in a little bit of generality. I'll, I'll suppose I have uh, just a general you know, bivariate distribution, uh, but uh, let me suppose my f of x theta, it could be this one, but it could be any two components, uh, is given by some pi of theta uh, times f sub theta of x. So this, if you like, is the marginal distribution of theta, and this is the conditional distribution of x given theta. But in statistics, this is the prior distribution, and this is the likelihood. Anyway, any measure can be written this way. Um, and uh, the Gibbs sampler is the same, uh, um, you know, from, uh, from x theta, I would, I would pick a new x from this distribution, and then given that, I would pick a new theta from, from the posterior distribution using Bayes' theorem, and I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. And, um, and so what is the chance, so I go from x, I pick a new theta, and then I pick an x prime. What's the chance of going from, uh, I'll write k of x, x prime, what is the chance of, you know, the x chain? Well, of course, all, all that is is from, from, from x, I have to pick theta. So uh, I do that from the, let's write it down, uh, the, this normalized, uh, okay, let, let me let m of x be the marginal distribution. Whatever carrier uh, measure uh, I'm working in, sorry, the marginal distribution pi d theta. 
So that, that's just the marginal distribution of theta. So uh, um, uh, so I, I sample from uh, uh, the chance of going to x prime. I have to pick a theta. Uh, so let's do that. F pi theta of f of theta x pi of theta. Uh, I have to pick a theta. I'm going to integrate over theta. This is normalized by m of x. So this is the posterior distribution. The conditional distribution of theta given x is that. And then uh, from that theta, I have to uh, pick an x prime. So that's the chance of going from x to x prime in one step. Here I'm integrating over whatever space this is theta, uh, and integrating with whatever pi is a density is with respect to, uh, all right, you know, nu d theta, whatever, whatever I'm integrating with respect to. And OK, so that's just the chance of going from x to x prime. Well, this <laughs> notice that m of x times k of x x prime, just multiply through by m of x, is equal to the integral of f uh, of uh, uh, theta of x, f of uh, theta, f of theta of x prime, uh, pi of theta, whatever that is, nu d theta. So this is symmetric in x and x prime, right? So this is equal to m of x prime times uh, uh, k of x prime x, just by observation. So the x chain is a Markov chain, and it has the marginal distribution as a stationary distribution. And uh, idea 0 prime, <laughs> it's the same idea. Uh, if I can figure out how many steps it takes to make the x chain, the j chain, the, 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 this first coordinate chain, random, once the j chain is random, since the Gibbs sampler picks from the right conditional distribution, the bivariate chain is random. So it's in, if, if, so idea zero prime, if the uh, x chain is close to stationary, I'll, I'll write as random, close to stationary. The, uh, in in uh, L steps, um, the uh, uh, x theta chain is, is OK in L plus 1. In, in L plus 1 steps. Because, of course, you could sample from this measure. You know, you can sample from. Where is my measure? Uh, I could, you know, to sample from this measure, I could sample from pi, and then I sample from x given pi, and so, th th and these are easily quantifiable uh, bounds on total variation. So it's enough to just study the x chain. Okay. So what is the x chain for this beta binomial example? Uh, so uh, the j chain. I'm just going to write it down. Uh, what is the chance of going from j to j prime in, in one step? Well, you have to do these integrals, but they're standard beta integrals. It's easy to do. And it's equal to uh, n choose j, n choose j prime divided by 2 n times j plus j prime. Uh, and then there's a normalizing constant, which is n plus 1 over 2 n plus 1. OK, I just did these integrals. Now, just stop for a second. This is supposed to be a Markov kernel in j prime. That is, for each j, if you sum this in j prime, it's, it's 1, because we made it that way. Well, prove it. That is, at some identity, it's not so simple to prove. It's, it's two van der Monde, but um, anyway. Uh, OK, so that's our Markov chain. The stationary distribution of this Markov chain pi of j, the stationary distribution, uh, m of j, it's called, uh, m of j, m of j is uniform, 1 over uh, n plus 1, 0 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n. Um, uh, so and th this is a clearly a reversible Markov chain with respect to the uniform distribution. So I needed to now analyze this chain, and I want to show you what a theorem in the subject looks like. 
Uh, so this is our theorem. This is so far for this J chain. Uh, now notice this is a very vigorous chain. That is, this can go, you know, from, from any place, it can go any place in one step. It's not a local type chain. Uh, um, so what's our theorem? Uh, well, the first part of the theorem is that, uh, that uh, the eigenvalues of um, this K are, well, uh, one, it's a Markov chain, uh, uh, one minus two over n plus two. That's the second eigenvalue. And uh, n times n minus one times n minus j plus one divided by n plus two, n plus three, n plus j plus one. And I hope that when j is one, this is that. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, uh, and this is uh, from, uh, well, uh, 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to n. These are the eigenvalues. So this is beta j. Okay, that's the jth eigenvalue. So the eigenvalues are reasonable numbers, and that's the spectral, spectral gap is that. That's part A. B, the eigenfunctions. Uh, are nice. They're the discrete Chebyshev polynomials. And all that means is that they're the orthogonal polynomials for the uniform distribution on 0, 1, up to n. You know, if you take the polynomials 1, x, x squared, et cetera, and you make them orthogonal by Gram-Schmidt, those are the orthogonal polynomials with respect to this marginal distribution, and they're classical polynomials called, uh, called Chebyshev uh, polynomials, uh, uh, discrete Chebyshev polynomials. And uh, C, uh, using these ingredients, uh, and I, I wrote down the answer so that I don't have to make it up, um, uh, uh, for the bivariate chain, this is for the K chain, uh, for the bivariate chain, uh, for k wiggle of um, j theta to j prime theta prime, okay, that's the chain that we're supposed to analyze uh, um, uh, on, uh, uh, well, on 0 up to n across 0, 1. Um, the uh, 1 half beta 1 to the L. Uh, is less than or equal to the total variation distance after L steps to the stationary distribution, I guess I'm calling it F, total variation distance, is less than or equal to beta 1 to the L minus 1 over 1 minus beta 1 to the 2L. This is for all L, or equal to 2. And, and so basically, since beta 1 is very close to to one, um, basically, this says that you know if you if you make beta one if you make beta one if you choose L large enough so that beta one to the L is um, is what you want, you you have matching upper and lower bounds. And just to uh, just to um, so if L is bigger than or equal to uh, 250, uh, the when n is 100, uh, the distance is less than or equal to one over. 100, and if L is less than or equal to 50, the distance um, uh, is bigger than or equal to a half. So, um, you know, if you know this kind of information, you can answer this and you can prove what's true. Uh, so um, that's an example of a, a, a case in which we could explicitly diagonalize things. And the trick that made this possible works enough so that it's worth explaining to you, you know, why did this happen? When does it happen? How can I see if it's happening in a chain that I care about? So let me tell you this, um, this trick, which is, uh, it's, okay, so uh, the key trick um, 
Uh, I'll just explain it to you. Um, and so I'm now I'm going to I'm working with this Markov chain, okay? The, this J chain. It's a kind of messy transition matrix. And let me compute with respect to this Markov chain what's the expected value of the next step given that the last step is J. Okay, that's just that's a, that's a question you could ask. On the average, how far do you move after one step? And what is this equal to? Uh, uh, well, this is equal to the expected value. Yuval isn't the only one who can use the, this property. The expected value of x prime given that x is j and given theta. Okay, I, I can condition on theta. Now, if you tell me what theta is, the next step is just a binomial with parameter n and theta. So I know what this is. It's just n times theta, right? So this is equal to uh, the expected value of n times theta given that x is, uh, given that x is j. This j, that doesn't matter. Um, given that x is j. Um, and, well, let's keep going. This is equal to n comes out. This is equal to the integral uh, uh, from, zero to, uh, from 0 to 1 of the, of, let's, well, let, let me write it down, theta to the uh, theta. I'm just taking the mean of the beta density with uh, parameter uh, j plus 1 and n minus j plus 1 theta d theta. This is, that, this is that same. And we can do this integral. Let's write it actually down. Uh, this is equal to um, n times uh, gamma of uh, j plus 1, uh, gamma of uh, uh, n minus j plus 1 over gamma of uh, n plus 2. That's, that's the normalizing constant from this. Then uh, there's a, a beta integral that's left. Um, uh, the beta integral that's left just has one extra theta in it. And so that is uh, gamma of n plus 3. Uh, this, I said this upside down. It actually matters <laughs> when you do actual integrals. Uh, this is gamma of n plus 2 uh, uh, divided by uh, gamma of j plus 1, gamma of n minus j plus 1. And then here is, uh, these, these go the other way, uh, gamma of j plus 2, uh, gamma of n minus j plus 1. Uh, divided by gamma of n plus 3. Okay, a lot of stuff cancels um, when, you, uh, when you do this. And, uh, well, what is it actually, given that I've gone this far and done it? So there's, a, there's an n here. Um, this, this is n plus 1 factorial over n plus 2 factorial. So this is over n plus 2. That's the that's that constant. And then there's times um, uh, 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 j plus 1, I think. That's, that's what it is, equals that. Now, when I saw that, and I hope when you see a ca calculation like this, you will say, aha, this is very good news. The expected value of the next step, given that we were at j, is affine in j. It's linear in J. It's affine in J, right? That's good <laughs> because, okay, idea one, given that it's affine in J, find C, you will find it, such that uh, the expected value of X prime minus C given uh, X equals J is equal to, this is the eigenvalue, n over n plus 2 times uh, j minus c. We can solve this equation. We, we, we can write down what the left-hand side is and the right-hand side and solve for c. If you can find such a c, and of course you can, there's, a, there's a one equation and one unknown, 
here you, you, you'll find that c is equal to n plus 1 over 2 when you, when you solve this equation. That means that x prime minus c is an eigenfunction with eigenvalue that ratio. Aha. Right? Okay. So, so uh, psi of j is equal to j minus n plus 1 over 2 is an eigenfunction with eigenvalue uh, um, n over n plus 2, which is equal to 1 minus 2 over n plus 2. Once you see that, very, very often, and certainly in this case, it, it occurs that also the expected value of x squared, given x equals j, is a quadratic function of j, is equal to uh, uh, a j squared plus b j plus c for some, <laughs> that c is being different than these, and then you can normalize this to find a quadratic eigenfunction. You, you have, you know, several equations here and there's enough to, to so any time the expected value of how far you go to the kth power is a polynomial in k, there are polynomial eigenfunctions, and then if it's a reversible chain and the eigenvalues are distinct as they are here, um, their polynomial eigenfunctions, is, they have to be orthogonal because they are the eigenfunctions of a reversible Markov chain. There's only one set of polynomials that's orthogonal, you know, with respect to a given measure on a finite set, right? Just, then they're the Chebyshev polynomials. So you don't have to do any calculations, actually. Uh, you had to, this calculation I had to do. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so that, that trick works in hundreds of examples. There are many, many examples. In biology, in the problem I talked about two days ago, which was this um, uh, Burnside process, that had polynomial eigenfunctions. And, okay, I won't take you further through this except to say, so I know the eigenvalues, I know the eigenfunctions, and then you use the standard tricks. So to finish, to prove C, that is, to, to, to get the bounds, uh, you, you write uh, four times the total variation distance uh, minus uh, stationary, its stationary distribution uh, squared. I, I want to bound this so I can bound it square. Uh, that's equal to the sum of uh, k j j prime uh, minus uh, 1 over n plus 1, uh, whole thing squared. Uh, that's uh, less than or equal to uh, the sum of uh, uh, k j j prime minus uh, 1 over n plus 1, just use Cauchy-Schwartz, uh, times 1 over n plus 1. This is just Cauchy-Schwartz. And this, by the Poincharel theorem, or whatever it's called in this context, is equal to uh, the sum uh, from L equal, from A equals 1 up to N of the eigenvalue beta sub A to the 2 lth power times the eigenfunction, let me call it psi um, sub A squared at the starting distribution uh, J. Um, so this is, these are absolutely standard facts. And now you know these, you know these, and I don't think you need to see me do calculus. But uh, that's, that's where that bottom line comes from. And if you want to see the calculus, it's written down with loving care in that, in that paper. So this is an example of, um, of explicitly diagon diagonalizable Markov chains. And um, uh, then it's a reasonable question, what happened? How come I could do this chain, and where else does it work? And uh, in the paper, we abstracted uh, this setup, and uh, it, we, we showed that if you take f sub theta of x to be any uh, exponential family, I won't define those right now, but they're standard tools for statistician, and pi of theta be the conjugate prior. Any one of the family of the conjugate priors, um, then the same analysis goes through. And there are many, many examples. I mean, you know, so many families of examples where more or less everything goes through and you get, if you like orthogonal polynomials as I do, it's, 
It's a burden, but I bear it. Uh, uh, the, the many esoteric, beautiful orthogonal polynomials came up, and you can read all about it in that paper. Um, a final thing that happened that was kind of nice is that my student, uh, Shidich Kare, and another student at the time, uh, Hua Zhu, um, were able to find some higher dimensional versions of this where the same thing happens, the multinomial distribution with the Dirichlet prior, and where those Markov chains were being used by biologists in a very extensive, aggressive way and being studied by simulation, and somebody written a book and another counter book, and they could do all of the math and cut through a lot of the talk and, and prove some theorems about problems that, that, that people were quite interested in, all using these same examples. So, Maybe this is a continuation of the, of the last method, the method of miracles, but sometimes a miracle happens. You can explicitly diagonalize a Markov chain. Mostly it happens for random walks on groups where you can use character theory, and if you're here, I think the, the talk I'll give next day, which is tomorrow, uh, will do something m more groupy, but that, that, that's one infinite collection, of course, of, of examples where this, these kinds of techniques work. Uh, you know, I wish they worked all the time. That, that's, they don't, of course, but, uh, um, but they do work a surprising proportion of, of the time. Um, let me see if I wanted to tell you anything else about this example. Um, uh, uh, oh, right. Um, let me, what, the reason I decided to do this example is that one of the students came up to me and said, well, what's the big deal about constants? You know, why are you so taken with constants? And, and, you know, what if somebody, well, if you look in the mathematical statistics literature, my former student Rosenthal and Gareth Roberts and Tweedy and mine, et cetera, um, they talk about something which is called geometrically ergodic. Ergodicity. And hundreds of papers end by saying this chain is geometrically ergodic. What does that mean? You have a chain and KL, say starting at X, to its stationary distribution pi in total variation is less than or equal to some constant that depends on X times some gamma to the elf power where zero less than C of X uh, less than infinity and um, gamma is uh, less than one, okay? And their arguments give no hold, not rough hold, no hold on what C is or what gamma is. Well, what does that tell you? It, it doesn't even tell you that 10 to the 33rd is enough. It tells you nothing. It tells you that the chain converges. Well, good, that's nice. I mean, really, what my students did was take that machinery and actually put constants into the proof, and that was the best they could do. And the, those guys, it was a statistics paper, came in and said, well, let's try this method, let's try this variant. And nobody got better than 10 to the 33rd. I'm not making up 10 to the 33rd. That's what the number was. And okay, it's useless. I mean, so if somebody says geometric ergodicity, just stop listening. They're just not talking about anything. It really is the way I feel about it. They're, sh they're sh saying they can prove the chain converges. Good. That's okay. I mean, you know, but it's, unless you can give me some hold on C and some hold on gamma, even a bad bound, uh, uh, but some bound, uh, it's not saying anything. And then if you look at what it actually says, you know, it's just so far from being useful that it should be an embarrassment, but I don't think they are embarrassed. Then. Okay. Uh, I hope I haven't insulted anybody here too badly, but uh, uh, if, if, if I did, I meant to. So uh, it's, uh, it really is a, a minor crime uh, that, people, that people allow themselves to do that. And that, uh, okay, so now I'm gonna make the same error, so I wouldn't have come on so strong if I wasn't guilty myself. Uh, so that was an example of sometimes you can explicitly diagonalize a Markov chain, and for no, nothing else, it's kind of fun. I mean, if you like to do this kind of analysis. Uh, so the, the, the last topic on my list of methods was called backward iteration, and that's gonna, but before I, so it's a new topic, so does anybody want to complain or attack me back or ask a question? There it all is. Uh, 
Uh -huh. The second stage. Yeah. No, that, well, okay, so I, I start at J theta, yeah. and I change, I change, right, of course it uses J prime, right, if I did I, right, so it uses J prime, that is, I, I have to change, so I first change, I change the first coordinate given the second, that's sampling from a binomial distribution with parameter theta, then call that J prime, now I have to sample from the conditional distribution of the bivariate distribution given that the first coordinate is J prime. I have to, you know, that's what we do. So, so that's a beta distribution with parameter j prime and n. There, I mean, there's my density. Where is my density? Here's my density. It's someplace up here. It's up there, right? Okay, so, so it's a function of two variables. If you fix the first coordinate at j prime and look at it as a, you have to renormalize, of course. If you look at that as a function of theta, that's a beta distribution with parameter j prime plus one. Right. So I, think, I think I understand the way you described the scene was quite a few steps and you went, so you're really alternating. Yeah. The first step is this, it is actually forgot the j and... and uh, I see, I, I, I first, well you can alternate, you can start in any... Reverse the order of the steps. Okay, okay. Right, you could do it. Okay, but if I, if that's my chain, and if I f first fix theta and sample from j, okay, then I fix that j prime and I sample from the relevant measure in theta, that's a version of the Gibbs sample. You could do it in either order. But, but it's different, I think. Yeah, they're, they're two. You get, a, you get a Markov chain on the j variable. Yeah. Well, n the chance of, I don't agree, so okay, but it, it's elementary, and, but let's try, see if we can figure it out. The chance of going from x to x prime, I have to sample from the conditional distribution of, I have to sample, I have to go, I have to change, I'm at, I'm at, I'm at x, right? And, and, and now I'm, I have to change theta, and I would sample from the conditional distribution of of theta given x, and that is, I hope, right, yeah. what I wrote down. In backwards, okay. Okay. Th thank you, and sorry. Okay. Right. I hope we got it right in the in the paper. Right. It is. It's elementary enough so that even you can ask difficult questions of the speaker. Good. Thank you, Winnie. Okay. But. Uh, you can do it in either order, and actually that, that, that can matter. But, uh, okay, it is worth saying, what's, what, let me, here's a problem that I would like somebody to help me solve. Uh, I'll put this one down. Okay, I'll just do it here. Let me take a trivariate example. So try this, try f of j, n, and theta, okay? which is, this, this is a standard model, uh, it's n choose j, uh, theta to the j, one minus theta to the n minus j, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the n over n factorial. So this is a binomial distribution where I don't know n, so I put a Poisson prior on n. Anyway, this is a probability distribution in uh, zero less than or equal to j, less than or equal to n uh, cross uh, zero, one. So these three parameters, and each, it's very easy to do the Gibbs sampler if you fix two of them sampling from the third one and try to prove something about that. Each of the coordinate chains, each of the pair chains are nice and has orthogonal polynomial eigenvalues, but unfortunately the J chain is now no longer a Markov chain. That is, this is a trick that has something to do with two variables. And still, you know, that's a very concrete problem, you know, What's, what's the rate of convergence of that Markov chain? Um, and there is something to say, but, but I don't, and it's probably nice, but I don't know how to make it nice. Thank you. Okay, uh, next, uh, uh, okay, I don't know how much next is it. When should I aim to stop? 
12 minutes. OK, let me try to say iterated random functions a little bit. Uh, uh, I'll try for 10. <laughs> iterated random functions. And again, this is a very general approach to analyzing Markov chains. Um, I have some space actually arbitrary, but say it's Polish. Uh, so, so x uh, uh, d is a complete separable metric space. Uh, I have a family of functions f theta uh, from x to x, uh, theta contained in some other space theta. I have a probability distribution uh, mu d theta on theta. Uh, uh, pick theta 1, theta 2, et cetera, iid from mu. And uh, let start someplace uh, and then go to f sub theta 1 of x, call that x1, and then go to uh, f sub theta 2 of x1, uh, which is called x3. So just each time, it's a random dynamical system, if you like that language, each time I'm, 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 you know, going, I'm going from where I was to the next one by whatever, whatever function I happen to pick there. Uh, so that, that is a Markov chain, and in fact all Markov chains can be so represented, uh, up to measure theoretic silliness, and, uh, but certainly any Markov chain that anybody would care about can be so, so represented for some for theta equals a unit interval, for example. Um, and, um, uh, and so let me give you an example. Um, uh, and then the question is, what can you say about this Markov chain, about its stationary distribution, about its convergence, et cetera? Um, uh, and so uh, example, uh, um, suppose I have um, x is equal to r. And I just have two functions, uh, uh, f1 uh, of x is equal to ax plus 1, and f2 of x is equal to ax minus 1, where 0 less than a less than 1 is fixed. Okay, so I just have two functions, and I take mu, uh, mu, of z mu of 1 equals mu of 2 equals a half. So I pick one of these two functions. So this is Bernoulli convolutions. Uh, this usually would be written as uh, xn plus 1 is equal to a times xn plus epsilon n plus 1, where epsilon uh, uh, i or i i d plus or minus 1 with probability a half. The simplest auto, auto, autoregressive process. And um, so that's a, a, a very well-studied process, but still has some mysteries. Um, so just so that you see the idea, uh, uh, what's to say? So let's run this. Uh, so say x0 is 0. So then x1 is epsilon 1. x2 is a epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. x3 is a squared epsilon 1 plus a epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3, etc. cetera. Uh, xn is equal to a to the n minus 1, epsilon 1 plus and so on plus epsilon n. That's just what it becomes. Um, and so we're asking about the behavior of this Markov chain. Um, it's useful to see the the, the backward <laughs> recurrence, so let yn we be the process run backward, but I'll just write it down. It's equal to a to the n minus 1 epsilon n plus a to the n minus 2 epsilon n minus 1 plus and so on plus uh, epsilon 1. That is the chain run backward, but anyway, it's another chain. It's another process. It's not a chain. This is a process. The epsilons are random. Um, and um, of course, this random variable has the same law as this random variable. Of course they do. But this random variable converges almost surely uh, to y infinity equals the limit uh, of yn, which is the sum of um, uh, a, 
a to the i, uh, epsilon i, I'll say i equals zero to infinity. Um, now, in this sum, you know, this sum converges almost surely, a is less than one. Now, look at this random variable. It's a random variable. It's almost surely well defined. If you multiply this random variable by a and add plus or minus one, uh, uh, the law of a y infinity um, uh, plus epsilon, it's just the same random variable is equal to the law of y infinity. Right? You just, it's, it starts with a random bit, and then it's a times an independent random bit, et cetera. This is the stationary distribution. Okay? This argument, which is the backward iteration, works very, very generally. Um, and uh, I'm not going to have time to say so much. It's too bad it's an interesting subject. But at least let me say this about it. Um, so, um, so in general, back to this setup, uh, 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 x in uh, is equal to uh, f of uh, f of uh, how do I do it? I do f of theta one f so f of theta n composed with f of theta n minus one composed with f of theta one applied to wherever you started. I mean that's just you know you iterating the functions you just compose random functions. And um, y n is equal to, you just run them backwards, f of theta 1 composed with, composed with f of theta n of x naught. Um, this is a Markov chain as, as this. It just keeps bopping around. It doesn't converge at all each time you're adding plus or minus 1. And this one converges. And very often, well, this is always the Markov chain we're interested in. This has the same law as that, because the thetas are IID. And under mild conditions, this converges. So let me give you a set of conditions uh, and point you to a paper where you could read many, many examples of where this technique works and then stop. Um, so um, suppose uh, each uh, uh, f sub theta is Lipschitz and that is the distance between uh, uh, f sub theta of x and f sub theta of y is less than or equal to some Lipschitz constant k sub theta uh, of times the distance between x and y. So that'd be OK here, <laughs> but it's, it's sometimes OK. It's often OK. Um, so suppose that each f sub theta is Lipschitz. And I need to make some assumptions, but they're very mild. Uh, uh, suppose, say, um, that the um, average uh, Lipschitz constant, uh, u d theta, is finite. And uh, the average distance, uh, um, uh, the integral of uh, the distance of uh, f sub theta of x naught to x naught, just uh, uh, u d theta is finite. So those are just saying you, you're not picking from Cauchy distributions or something, how far you go for some x naught. That there is a point uh, so that this is. And then the assumption that has some uh, uh, teeth, and then let me write it down properly, uh, um, which is just that. Uh, so the assumption that some version of this is needed, that the average of log of the Lipschitz constant mu d theta uh, is, is finite. Oh, it's negative. It's less than zero. Less than zero. So on the average, we're contracting, is what, this, uh, is what these assumptions say. And then the theorem is. Uh, uh, there, it's, it's quite a reasonable uh, theorem. Uh, so the induced Markov chain, the Xn chain, has a unique stationary distribution. 
um, you get exponential rates of convergence, um, the Prokhorov distance, I'll write D again, the Prokhorov distance of uh, the chain after n steps starting at any x um, uh, to its stationary distribution uh, is less than or equal to Cx times gamma to the n for 0 less than C of x uh, less than infinity uh, and 0 less than gamma less than 1. So it's geometrically ergodic and uh, this is A, this is B and C uh, is that the backward iteration converges uh, uh, y n chain uh, goes to y infinity distributed as pi almost surely. Um, and so there is this kind of theory uh, and in so now this proof is constructive uh, and so in principle it's possible, well I do know I actually have good bounds on C of x but uh, it is constructive in gamma but uh, I've never seen anybody actually managed to go through the proof and give a numerical value of gamma. But there are many, many examples of, of where this occurs. Um, uh, oh, I don't know, just given that I went to dinner with Yuval last night, instead of going on about that, I'll go back to this example. Um, uh, <laughs> look at this random variable. It's a famous random variable they're called Bernoulli convolutions. Um, if A is a half, this is Lebesgue measure on minus 2 to 2. If A is less than a half, it's singular continuous. If A is bigger than a half, it's natural to guess it has a density. But that guess is wrong if you take the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2 or any piezo number. Uh, um, uh, less than 1. Uh, um, this doesn't have a density, it's always singular continuous, uh, but a theorem that Yuval has been involved in um, with a number of other people, Erdish beginning with Erdish, is it's now a theorem that for almost all values of A between a half and one, this is absolutely continuous. And so these representations can be used to study uh, the stationary distribution and there are many, many nice techniques available and, and this is a part of the world that I'd love to talk to you about more but good taste forbids me and lunchtime and so thank you. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Oh, the reference, yes, uh, uh, the reference is um, uh, a paper I wrote with David Friedman, uh, uh, P PD, uh, bad, I can do better than that. Uh, uh, here it is, in fact, iterated random functions. Uh, so I don't have to write, it's written there, uh, uh, PD and David Friedman. It's on my home page, it's in the SIAM journal, the SIAM review. So it, 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 again, it won a prize for a readable paper and it's, and it's got lots of, <laughs> you know, nice colored pictures and, and, and they're amazing stories that I just can't tell you, but uh, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a wonderful world and uh, it is a, 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 a set of techniques that don't seem to be used by our community to actually bound rates of convergence and maybe they should be because it's a, it's a rich and very, very, very interesting set of, of, of techniques. So that's what I meant by item seven on my list. Hi, Yuval. Oh. <laughs>